let's get started. Hi everyone, morning, happy Monday, yay, week three. Um, actually, just before we get started, I'll just put it out there, um, a reminder, because um, the servers were being maintained over the weekend and you missed out on 24 hours, um, your problem set is now due on Tuesday at 8 p.m. to give you back 24 hours. Um, yeah, so hopefully um, everyone didn't kind of lose the plot when they realised nothing is available. This was a university-based shutdown, so we couldn't control it at CSE. But it shut down our servers as well, obviously. Uh, I think, what else is there? That was it, that was a big one. Hey? Oh, yes. Um, help sessions are starting this week as well. So the first help session is at 4 p.m. today and there's gonna be a timetable on the website for it as well. So if anyone is struggling with your labs right now, come along to the help session and get some help. And the tutors there will help you. All right, let's get started. All right, let's see what you remember from last week. Than four and it started at one it's not going to run four times unfortunately be helpful to go through it um, to see what's going on um, because the printf happens before it's increased as well okay who's coming on top now oh. well that's that's a Monday morning vibe if I've ever seen one oh. hope you're wearing your glasses wasting your time now. I feel like people just chose anything for that one because they couldn't see what was going on. All right, so the loop inside a loop is going well. start going once you compile it's all over interesting names these are in the same program I should probably specify so in the same file my feelings. Um, 
you can't have the same definition in two different enums. So because this says coolie, this says coolie, you can't have it because it's a global variable. So it's like you're trying to redefine it. All right. Um, so enums went really well at the end of last week. Good. All right, last one. Oh, I hope it's not going to be tiny little code. So your struct variable name is dish, which means that you will be assigning to dish, and then you use the little dot, and then if you're assigning to the spice member, you'll do dish.spice, um, and then you will assign a value by using one equal sign. All right, let's see who's... Aditha, this is going to be your opportunity for throwing. Just testing out your arm this time. You might not want to hold the coffee at the same time. I'd let that go. Unless you're really trying to show up, Sophia. Oh, I don't even want... Is anyone in the audience? There we go, one over there. Oh, God. Oh. Okay, like a little show off, but not like that bad. Just throw a few around. Why not? Live a little. It's Monday. Wake up, people. A bit of a sugar hit. All right, well done. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, that's done now. Okay, so... I sure can. Sure can. Well, no wonder those online could not see the Kahoot. <laughs> it was incredibly tiny. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. I think, yeah, good. Okay, so um, it's happening. We're finally going to do functions, so I can stop saying functions. Don't worry, I'll, we'll talk about it in week three. Um, it's actually going to happen. How amazing. Um, and that also means that um, it's an end to ugly code. It's an end to 100 lines all in one. We're going to break up our code into functions now. Um, usually at this point in time is when students start to find things to get a bit difficult. So don't worry, um, functions take practice, um, and s as does everything else when you're doing um, coding. It's not... Um, okay, live lecture code, um, usual place in week three. So, so far you've heard me refer to printf, scanf, um, main, you've heard me say function like a million times, um, but what does it mean? I have not talked about procedures, um, I don't really like procedures, well, I do like procedures, but there's, it's not a real thing in C, um, but we still kind of will define it as well for ourselves, because it just fits in with what we're talking, when we're talking about functions. Um, so let's actually have a look at what does it mean to be a function and what what is actually a function? Basically, a function is a way to break down our code into smaller components. Um, and what happens is that each function... Oh, who put that there? That's an awkward spot for it. Um, so a function, once it break, breaks down, it performs a little portion of your code. And what it helps you to do, it makes the code more modular. And it also helps the readability of the code. It means that not everything is all in one kind of place and it's a bit of a dog's breakfast. It also allows you to use that function many times. So if you have a functionality that you want to be doing many times over in your code, you can just write a function and call it each time you want to perform that action. So it means that you're writing better code and you're not repeating yourself um, and it means it's much easier for you as well. So each function has inputs and an output. Um, yes, you might not give it anything, so then it has no inputs, um, and 
It might have no outputs as well. Can anyone think of a function that has no output? When do we not have an output? When do we not return anything? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So printf, we don't actually return anything because we're just printing something out to terminal. We don't really have to take something and give it back to something. So when we ask a function to run, we're making a call out to it. Um, and we can do it anywhere in our code. We will call to a function, just like you might call someone's name out. They will respond to you. So when we call a function, it will perform whatever it needs to perform and it will return back to the place where it was called from. Um, so basically, this is kind of how it works, okay? We're to divide it up and we'll do the code. Don't worry, we'll do a simple code and then we'll do um, a harder piece of code with functions. So you've seen me write int main and then in brackets void um, and you've been amazed at how amazing all that is, maybe. So the first thing that we write, that first little bit, that's the return type of that function. And that's why in our main we will finish the function with return zero because zero is an int. And when we write int main, we're saying that this function is going to return an int. You don't have to have an int there. You can have a char there. You can have a double there. You can have something called void. Um, what do you reckon void means? Yeah, you don't return anything. It is the void. It is the black hole. There's nothing coming back. But you're being very specific in saying you're returning something or you're not returning something. Then the next thing that comes is the name of the function. And we can call the function anything you want. Um, although really, you know, don't do anything you want because that's bad style. Call the function uh, based on what the function is actually doing so that if someone is reading through and a call is made to that function, I can really see what's going to happen based um, on the name of the function. So, you know, if I make a call out and say add and list two numbers in brackets, it's very obvious what that's going to do. So it kind of helps to have that good readability of the code as well. And then in brackets, we will give the input, so the arguments, um, the parameters that are going into the function that we're saying the function is going to get. You, you, know, you can have one thing there, you can have two things there, you can have three things there. It depends what that function is performing. So in this case, what we're saying is this function is going to get two ints. Um, it's going to get int number one and int number two. The names, the variable names here, they don't much matter, okay? Um, the main thing is that we're giving the two ints and that means that when the call is made, we're going to expect that two ints will be given to this function to do something with. Okay, so here in this little function, we've, we're going to calculate the sum of two numbers. So I've got a variable called int sum and then the sum will use these two things that were brought here. So they were called number one and number two. So when a call is made and two ints are given, they'll go into these variables that were made here and if you add them out then you will return sum and it's an int which is what you said you will be returning. So that's all that a function is um, and it's really just helping you to break things down and to have um, modularity to your code. Okay, we're going to write a very simple case of functions and then we're going to do a harder one. So, oh, simple functions. I even called it simple functions. Um, I don't think I modded it. That would help. Okay, so we're going to create a simple program that will calculate area of a triangle and then we'll try and use a function. So this program itself is going to be so simple that it's not usually the contender for like, oh, I better break this up into functions. Um, but we're going to do it just so that you get to see what a function is in a really simple kind of program that's only a few lines. And then we're going to go and do something bigger. So when your assignment comes out, next week, so yay, um, probably after the Monday lecture, um, you will have many functions, okay? And it won't just be little pieces of code, it will be, there'll be a lot more to contend with. So get ready for that, super exciting. Um, and then you're gonna have a very busy three weeks trying to finish it. Okay, so 
What do we need to do in a program that will calculate an area of a triangle? Okay, so we would need to um, scan in the height and the base of a triangle. So we would use scan F for that. And what else do we need to do? Um, then we need to use the formula. For those that don't remember the formula for triangle. Okay, and then we need to just output whatever the area is. Okay, so let's see what we can do with what we have, which is... Nope, didn't mean to do that. Okay, and then we'll do it as a function. So first of all, we're going to do it all inside the main, as we've been doing so far. And then we're going to break it down into a function and see how that works together. Okay, so I'm going to need some variables. Um, I would say I need a variable for base. I need a variable for height. Um, I'm really restricting this triangle into not being a, um, into using ints as opposed to doubles, which is going to cause some, I shouldn't have chosen a triangle. A triangle was a silly thing to choose. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. So, and then let's scan in what we have. So, okay, so to make it easier, I'll prompt for, for entering the height and base of a triangle. And then I'm going to scan in two um, percent Ds. One will go into base and one, one will go into height. Okay, great. And then I might do a formula. Um, I should have probably had a... Okay, so then I'll have an area and it's going to be 0 0.5 times base times height. And then I'm just going to output it. So let's see what happens when that runs. So we'll compile it. Okay, and then we'll run it. Okay, and I'll say three and four. And so the area of the triangle is six. Yep, that's right. Um, Okay, so it's, it's working. So now I'm going to say, okay, um, I'm going to move something out um, into a function, okay? And one of the good contenders is, for example, this, you're going to have a function that's more than one line usually, but sometimes it will be one line. I'm going to move this out into a function. Okay, so if I'm going to move this ability to calculate area into a function, um, I'm going to build it over here. So what will be this input into a function that will calculate area? What do I need to know if I want to calculate the area? Height and base. Yeah, height and base. So I need to give it the height and base. In my case, because I'm just keeping it simple, that's um, an int and an int. What will I output from it? So what will I return back to the main? Yeah. Yeah, so I will return back an area, which is also an int. I don't know if I made it a double. Anyway, whatever it is. And what should I call the name of the function? Area. Amazing. Um, does it calculate any area? Not in this case. Just a triangle in this case. So I might call it area triangle just to give it, um, you know, exactly what it's doing. Okay, so then I will... Um, define my function and so I'll say int so that's the return type I'm returning an int then the name of the function so area triangle 
Then I'll have brackets, and in brackets I'm going to put the two um, the inputs that are happening. So I've got two inputs, they're both ints, so I'll have an int height and an int base. Okay, so now this function is ready. Um, I've called it area triangle, and I want to be calculating this in the function. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to move that in here. Okay, so we'll see what... Okay. So let's just... We'll do the function first. So in here, I've got area is equal to half times base times height. And now I need to return something. What will I be returning? Area. Okay. So I'm returning an int and I'm returning this area that I've calculated. Okay, right now I'm not really going to be able to return it. I'm going to, because I haven't declared it inside that function. So when I've passed it the height and the base, the area that I've declared here actually stayed inside my main. I haven't really passed it on. So I'll need to have a new variable here, area. Or what I can do is if I'm returning an int, okay, what I can also do is I can just return the calculation. Okay, all that will do is just calculate and it will be an int and then I don't need to declare another variable. It's up to you how to, you know, how you're going to do it and maybe when you first start to program you'll take a few steps, you'll declare more variables than you need, um, but as you progress you might try it out with, you know, doing less. Okay, so great, I've got something, it will calculate the area, amazing, but now I need to call this function, okay? And so to call the function, I'll call it by name, just like I call someone else by name, if I will call out to them. And I'm going to give it something. I have to give it two ints, okay? The ints that I've called here is base and height, so that's what I'm going to give it, base and height. And what will happen is I've given them in this base and height order, which means that, okay, now they're mismatched to this. Um, in case, you know, they're, so I've actually given it as base first because the first thing I give it is going to go into this base and the second thing I give it is going to go into this height. So the names here is not the same as the names here, okay? They're two different, they're copies, okay? So when I've sent over these base and height, what I'm sending over is just the two ints, whatever the ints were. I'm not sending over these variable names. It's making a copy of them and placing them into these variables inside this function. And this will make more sense as we run through it and do it line by line. Yeah? Um, I, just wanted to ask, uh, I think the function is like undeclared at the moment because it's after the main. It's coming, yes, yes, yes. There's, yes, it's coming. Um, okay. So, great, we've got a function now and we're calling it and everything is going great for us, okay? We're just, we're winning at life. It's, it's amazing. What, what a piece of code, calculating an area of a triangle. So, fantastic. Now, if you remember over the last few weeks, um, what I've kept saying is that C reads things line by line in order, right? So, it starts at the main and then it starts going. So, in this case, it will go base, height, Great, I've got two variables, area, fantastic, I've got that area, I've got that variable, I'm going to print, I'm going to scan. And then when it gets here and it's saying, um, can you call this area triangle for me? It's going to go, sorry, what? I don't know an area triangle. I, I don't know where on earth that, because area triangle is sitting underneath, right? So it doesn't know what's coming 10 lines down or even one line down, okay? It's not... It's going in order. What that means we need to do is we need to say, okay, there is a function coming before the main and we do it. It's called prototyping our functions. This is what's coming afterwards. They're there, trust us. Um, you can use them as you go. So when you prototype a function, all you do is you take the first bit, which is just exactly what the function is, and before your main, you say that this, there is going to be a function, the function is going to be called area triangle, it's going to return an int and it's going to take two ints in and then you finish it with a semicolon. So what that's done is it has told it that it's coming, okay? Don't worry, don't freak out, there's going to be this function, um, we're not lying to you. 
Okay, so now if we compile that, Okay, so great, I forgot, yes, okay. So what have I done wrong? Who can tell me what I've done wrong? It's probably someone that has coded before. I have done something wrong um, and I don't really need this. So I've returned something from this function. Yeah. Um, you said oh, you initialized the area of the domain, but you asked for the region. I have, that's true. That's one issue, but that's not affecting me in this piece of code right now. Oh, these are sitting down throw. Just showing up here. I have to stand up. Okay. I'm going to ask someone in there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So right now, um, this area tri triangle is being called and it's giving it two things. Something's coming back, but I'm not storing it, right? I'm not actually, I don't know what the output is. I haven't moved it into anything. It's just kind of, it's going off and it's disappearing. So what I could do is I can actually um, assign the area. Whatever's coming out of this is going to be assigned to this variable. Now what this person over here said is going to be completely true because it's a double and I'm returning an int. It's not really going to like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that to start with. Okay. So, let's try doing this again. So, let's run it. Of course, now I've said it's an, it's, a, it's an int, but here I'm saying it's a double. I'm really just complicating matters. Okay, so let's save it again. And let's run it again. Okay, we've got success. So, now if we run... It's going to ask us for some numbers uh, and it's going to output the answer because it's made the call out to the function and then it came back with whatever it is. So what I could do as well, okay, is um, actually, Gab, can you run a poll please just to see, okay. What I could do as well is, okay, I know that this function over here is returning an int for me. And I could do this without even declaring this int by just saying over here, I just want to call this function. So I'm going to call the function here because I know it returns an int and I'm going to give it the parameters that I'm calling it with. And it will do exactly the same thing because the output of this is an int and that int is just going to go in here. Okay, so you can kind of do that across a lot of your code um, when you start to, but sometimes, uh, sometimes to start with, it is easier to not do that and to write full sentences. Okay, and so if I run it now, it will do exactly the same thing, even though the call is now coming from the printf. Okay, so two ways to do it. Let me just see how the poll is going. Okay, so things are going well. Everyone is really, everyone's doing well with functions. Um, I would love to know, oh, there's only 62 <coughs> votes. I wish people would like raise hands. <laughs> Okay. Okay, someone wants me to move my terminal to the right. Sure. So after the last lecture, someone wanted me to put the terminal down below. Uh, hey? Well, then you can't, people at the back can't see, I think. I could do that. Okay, so 160 votes now, things are, okay, uh, things are going okay. Okay, <laughs> things are going all right. All right, let's do another functions, harder functions, and we'll move things out. Actually, I have said that um, there is such a thing as a procedure, not really a thing in C, but 
basically a procedure is something that doesn't return anything, right? So it's a void function. So things that, when you're printing something out and you're going to void print something function, that's usually referred to as a procedure. Yeah. Okay, so it's, that's, this is a really nice, actually, question. And the question is, why do I have this lovely void here? So, int main, it, it's not necessarily, there are other things that it can have, okay? Because I can run a program and take input from my standard, from my terminal, right? And it has a different definition of parameters. The reason we put void there is to say that, in this case, this main is taking no inputs at all. And... It is good practice to write the void in there as opposed to leaving it like this. And you might have seen it with empty brackets and it will run fine, okay? It won't do anything. But you need to specifically say that there's going to be no inputs because there can be some undefined things that can happen. There's more to it. In week five, we'll look at it more. Okay, so because I'm scanning for the base and height inside the main, I'm defining them in the main. And then when I call this base and height, it's not the same as these ones. Like I could call this X and Y, right? Uh, then I can't use them here because these ones here are taken from this definition here. So this would be X and Y. So what happens when a callout is made, okay, when this, when this happens, it's not the variable that comes across, but when I make this call, I go here and I declare X and Y. And then those numbers that I've like called here, the numbers are copied into those variables. Does that answer your question? I'm not answering your question. I don't know what you're asking, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, all right. As in, why do I have this here and not inside this function? Okay, okay, that's a, that's a good question. I got it, I got it. Um, okay, so the reason I do that is because I need to give something to that function, right? And it's the way that variables work, okay? Whatever variable I've declared in here, it only, this base and height, it only lives in the main. It lives between these two little curlies and that's it, right? Anything that I, if I pass it to another function, I'm making copies of those variables. And everything in C is I make copies of them. So what I'm saying here is I'm saying I'm going to give you two things. I'm going to give you two variables that you've got to work with. And it allows me to pass whatever I took in here. It allows me to pass those two numbers to the function. So if I didn't pass those two numbers, there is no way I can have access to them in here unless I scan for them as part of this function. Yeah? So it's a way for me to give the function something. But if I scan for them here, then I don't... It will be a different definition, right? Okay. How's that? So good. That was a great question. Um, okay, fantastic. So let's... I don't know what I've just changed in this piece of code, but I changed something. Oh, well, that's happening now. Um, okay, so let's do another little functions and then we can, um, yeah. Okay, another great question. Okay, and the question is, instead of prototyping the functions up here before the main, can I just have my function happen before the main, right? So that we know it's coming, right? And... It is something that you can do. It will work fine, right? Because then you're telling C that there is this function, but it makes the code not as easy to read, okay? Because imagine I have 100 functions. I then need to scroll everywhere to try and find where my main is. And then I, because my reading always, my execution always starts in main. So for readability, another human reading my code, 
I like to do the prototypes and then the main because it tells me the running order of whatever's happening in the big program. And that's why, okay? That, that's why we don't do that. But sometimes when you have these tiny little things, it is just easier to put, you know, the function before the main. Okay, excellent. So let's do one more and then I will also talk about ScanF because you will need it in the lab this week. Um, and I really should do it. Another question. Yes. I usually do them in the order that I use them. But yeah. What a great question. Any other questions? I can't actually see anyone in front of me, so you're telling me if anyone in front of me, right? What happens if I? No, you can't do that. You, yeah. Yeah. Is it uh, more optimal to scan it directly in the function instead of scanning in the main and then the Depends. Depends what you're trying to do and depends on like how you're doing your code. Yeah, and what you're scanning in as well. Any other questions? Good questions. All right. Let's do a slightly harder one and then we'll do this ScanF thing as well. Talk about ScanF. Okay, so now we're going to do um, another functions exercise. Um, this one's going to have a uh, program takes in two, two dice have been rolled. It's going to take in the two die rolls and it will check whether the sum of the dice is equal to the target number and you win if that's the case, you lose if that's not the case. Um, Blah, blah, blah. So what do we need to do in this case? And I've given a lot of this code and I don't think I've chmodded it. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, um, and again, remember what I said to you before, um, we're going to talk a little bit about style today, but don't, uh, in your programs, please don't comment as much as I do. Um, it's not good style. I'm just doing it for you guys when you go back to these pieces of code that we talk about in the lecture. It's kind of like lecture notes as well. Okay, but you, do, you really don't need to say, you know, declaring variables or whatever. It's, it should be obvious when someone is reading your code what's going on. Um, and that's part of having, you know, good readability for another human being of your code. Okay, so um, I'm going to have uh, declare some variables, one for die one, one for die two. Um, I'm going to have a sum because I'm going to add them together. And then I'm going to, um, at this time I'm just going to do scanf return as well because I want to talk more about scanf. So I thought I'd do that variable again, that old chestnut, and talk about um, the function of scanf because I said scanf actually returns an int to us, okay? And the int that it returns is the number of things that were scanned incorrectly. Okay, great. Um, program asks for the two dice rolls and then it's going to scan them in. Um, and if it scans them in successfully, this scanf return should have um, int of two returned because it's, it needs to scan in two ints. So two will be the successful one. Um, okay. So let's check that the two numbers were actually read in. So let's use this scanf return. So if scanf return, so that return of the function of scanf, if it's not equal to 2, okay, then I assume that whatever, something's gone wrong, um, something's not working, and I'm going to print out, um, I don't know, the program is now closing. And... I'm going to return one just so that, I don't know, for fun because everyone's always like, why do you return zero? Um, so this means something has kind of gone wrong. It's not a fantastic example of it, but I'm, I'm returning an int still and that's what I said I'm going to return here. I'm going to return an int, so I'm still returning an int, but I'm returning one because if someone looks at the logs, they might know that this program did not go all the way to the end and <coughs> complete successfully. Something happened, it exited before it, it, you know, it was meant to. 
So what happens here is that return one exits out of the program because you're already returning an int, right? So that's it, it dies. Okay, so then I'm gonna have a sum, I'm gonna add up the two dice together. Um, and I think I missed defining my, yes I did. We should define the target number here as a constant. So let's do a hash define here and we're gonna call it target. And what should the number be? It can be anything that between one and, no it can't be one, two and 12. Seven, okay, great. All right, so we've added the two dice now. Now we're gonna check if it's um, greater than or less than. So I'm gonna check if that sum is, uh, that's greater than, so I'm gonna check that if the sum is greater than the target. And if it is, I'm going to print out that it is, um, greater than, else if the sum is less than, duh. then I'm going to print out that it's less than. And I guess that means that there is only one case left and that case is if, if they're equal, and that means I've guessed it correctly. So, okay, excellent. Should we try running it? And then we're gonna try splitting it. Uh, I'm in the wrong window. <laughs> okay. Okay, what have I done? I've forgotten something. What have I done? What? Let's see if people know what this error means. Nope, that's not what I meant to move. Do you really need to see my face online? I'll make things a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. What can I do? Do you know what I can do? I can put it all on the same line. I, w I think I was trying to show you what happens if my print statements get very long. Where am I? Here. Okay. Let's do it like this in one line and then we'll talk about what you can do if you um, need to kill it a little bit. I've got an erroneous curly bracket somewhere. Not there. So I'll move that. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so that and let's see if it runs. That's not what it was called. Okay, the two dice rolls, three and five. Um, the sum of the dice is greater than the target number. Good spelling. Um, okay, great, let's try it running it again and this time let's do it less than. So I'll do two threes. Okay, that's working. And then let's do it if it's going to be seven. And that's working as well, fantastic. Um, what would I do if I wanted to break it a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I should probably do some more checking of what's going on because there are, uh, I'm not actually checking that I'm entering numbers that are between um, one and six. You know, I could really enter anything there if I wanted to, but dice really go one and six. Um, so I might have some functions that will check for my um, conditions and you might have those functions in your assignment as well. So um, let's, let's break this up into some functions. Okay, first one's easy. Let's have a function that will add two dice together. What will be an input of a function that adds two dice together? What, what will I need to give it to add two dice? Will I, yeah. 
Yep, and what types are they? Yep, perfect. So I'm going to need to give it um, die 1 and die 2. So I'm going to need to give it an int and an int. And what will be the output of a function that adds two things together? Yep, an integer, exactly. So I'm going to output an integer and I'm going to call it, I don't know, add dice. Incredible. What a name. Um, okay, fantastic. So we've got a definition. And now let's actually write something for it. So let's say I've got int, that's my return type, is the first thing I do. Then the name of the function, which is add dice. Um, and then I'm going to say, what, it, what is it that I'm giving this function? And I'm giving it um, two dice, two ints. So I'm going to give it um, two dice, two ints that are going to come through to it. And then in this function, I'm going to add them together. So I'm just going to return and I'm going to add die one, which is what they're called here. So the two numbers that were passed to this function is the two numbers that I want to add together. And then I'm going to return whatever the result is of this, um, which is going to be an int, then I'm going to return that. Okay, great. Um, I've got one function that adds things in. So now instead of this and this sum, what I can do is I can actually make a call out to this function. Okay, so instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the function. So I'm going to call the function by calling it by name. And I'm going to add the dice and I'm going to give it die 1. And note here that I don't need to have, when I make a call to the function, I don't need to say int die 1, int die 2, right? I, it's, that's how I've defined the function to be. So it's going to, it's going to look for me to give it two ints. I just say what the ints are that I'm calling it out with. Um, again, uh, unfortunately, I will need to do something here because otherwise it's not dumb. Maybe some. Okay, otherwise whatever is returned from this function is going to disappear, right, if I don't put it into something. Okay, so I've called one function, um, and now I guess before we do more, let's make sure that it's working. So when you make any changes, and you will get to the point where you are not, um, you know, you don't do all your code in the main, you just write it as function. So when you write your code, I know I need to add something, so I'll just kind of write add something, and then I'll make a comment to myself, you know, make this, you know, function. And I'll write it as a function as I go, as opposed to writing all my code in main and then moving parts out and, and doing the modular stuff like that, which gets very tedious. Um, I already have some, so I didn't need to redefine it. Okay, so let's just make sure it's working. Okay, so this is, the, this is the error that you will see. Implicit declaration of function add dice is invalid. That's the error that you will see if you've forgotten to prototype. Okay, it means that, um, that we don't know what's coming. So that, this is where we do the prototypes before the main. So I'll, and it's really just your definition of this function and it's just going to go outside here with a semicolon. Okay, so now it all compiles and, and it's all going to run. Okay, so we've got one function. I think we'll need another function that might do the comparison to us. But looking at the time, it's a really fantastic time to take a little break. So let's have a five minute break and then what we're going to do is we're going to do another function to compare and then we're going to talk about scanf.
All right. Let's keep it going. Um, all right. How is how is everyone? How's everyone feeling? Gab, can you do just like a thank you? How is everyone feeling? What's the vibes? How are we feeling about functions? Um, okay, we're going to do the more complex ones. Okay, so the next function that we want to do is a function that will compare um, the sum to the target number. Okay, so we want to really move all of this rubbish out. Well, not rubbish, but we want to move all of this out um, and we want to test for it outside. So I'm going to control, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to kind of move it here for a second. Okay, so if I want a function that will compare my sum to the target number, what do you think I need to provide to this function as an input? I need the sum, but I'm not going to need the target number because my target number is a hash define and it's sitting up the very top, which means it's available everywhere, right? It's not, it's not um, hiding. Okay. So I need to give it the sum. Yes, I agree. So I'll give it the sum and it's an int. And what will it output? What does this function output? What will be the return of it? Is anything returning from it? Yeah, nothing is returning from it. All I'm doing is printing something out to terminal. Okay, which means that nothing is being returned. And that means it's, it's void. Okay, the return type is void. I'm not returning anything. Okay, and what's a good name for a function that, I don't know, compares something? Comparison. Amazing. What naming conventions. Okay, great. So I'm going to start doing this function now. So we've said it doesn't return anything. There's no output, so it's void. And we've called it comparison. Excellent. But I'm going to give it something because otherwise it can't do the comparison and what I'm going to give it is that sum. Okay, great. All right, so let's see. Um, so now I'm going to compare it in here if sum is greater than target, if sum and then else. Okay, great. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to take the definition of this function and put it as a prototype as well so that it knows it's coming okay great and now I need to really call to it and ask it to do something for me so I've got this um, I've got the sum now and now I need to call this function so I'm going to call to it by name comparison and then I said I'm going to give it the sum so I'm going to give it the sum because this function is not returning anything to me, it's a void, I don't need to kind of assign the return value to anything, I don't need to really consider anything. Um, whatever happens in that function, when it runs through, um, it's going to go through the function. At the end of this, it's going to come back to where it got called from and then it's going to continue on its merry way until it returns zero, which is just one line later. All right, so let's try running that um, and then we can see, you know, what that's, um, what that's doing. So compile, it compiles fine and if we run it, um, it's going to take... Um, okay, so it's working, it's clearly going to the function. I might do two different ones to try, it's doing greater than. Um, and if I do that, it's going to do less than the target number. Okay, so now you've got two functions um, within, you know, the same piece of code and your main is starting to look a little bit neater as well, except for all my comments, which are not looking that neat. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about, um, I think I had the extension of keep scanning in. So right now we're only doing one scan and then we're kind of moving on with our life. Um, we're finishing the program, it's just running through um, and that's it. So what happens if I want to keep scanning in numbers and, and keep guessing until the guess is right, I suppose, or anything like that? What happens if I want to keep scanning in until a magical thing that's called control D is pressed? Because I can do scan F um, until something called control D, D is pressed. Okay, and if 
for those of you that are like, oh, why control D? What on earth is control D? Um, basically, and I'm about to throw out another term, a control D kind of gives you an end of file, end of file EOF, which is a value in itself. Um, and it might be a minus one for a scan F to return, but it might be something else. So we don't rely on EOF. But we can check scan F and we can keep scanning in until um, kind of scan F is not returning a perfect two for us. So here we've checked, I think that it's not returning two, that I'm gonna give it, you know, the program's now closing by. Um, we haven't even checked if that's working or not. But what happens if I wanna keep scanning and I wanna keep doing it on a loop? Just used a magic keyword, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna keep doing it on a loop and I'm gonna say while that scanf return is equal to two, I'm gonna keep asking for more input and I'm gonna keep asking for more input. And then when someone presses control D, it will trigger a different input, it'll return a different value other than two and it will stop, right? So it will break out of the loop. Okay, so let's, let's try that out. Sure. Um, okay. All right, so let's do a loop. And the loop will ask for two things. Actually, now I want to, okay. So I could kind of um, check my scanf return is equal to two and it could be quite messy. I could have another variable in here or I could literally kind of keep scanning in on the loop and check that the return of this is equal to two each time. So since we've been doing so much shorthand, I think we'll do shorthand to start with and then if something's not clear, we'll break it up into a few statements. So I'm going to not have this variable here and what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just use the scanf function and I'm going to check that the return of this function is equal to two. And whilst it's equal to two, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of things. Okay, so all I'm saying is here is whilst whatever is coming out of this function, which is going to be an int, and if it's done successfully, it's gonna re keep returning two. So whilst it's scanning in and returning two, I wanna go inside this loop. When it stops doing that, I wanna break out of the loop. Okay, so whilst it's scanning in, um, I want to keep, oh, this is going to get ugly. Okay, I'm going to ask it for the two dice rolls. Then I'm going to scan in, I'm going to check what it is, and then I want to, this code is not going to be that pleasant to look over afterwards. Um, okay. So whilst it's scanning them in, and whilst it's equal to two, I'm going to sum up the two dice, and then I'm gonna do the comparison from here, and then I'm going to go again, and I'm gonna check it again, and again, and again. Um, I'm gonna ask it maybe another print statement here to ask it for another two dice rolls, and I'm gonna keep printing it out. Don't worry, we'll run through the code in a second. For those of you that are asking what's chmod um, online and in person, just ignore chmod. It's so that you can see, I'm resetting the file permission so that you can see whatever I'm typing. Um, so just don't worry when I do chmod, you don't need to know chmod. You'll learn more about chmod in 1521. Um, don't worry about it for now. Nothing to do with anything that you need to know. Okay, fantastic. So let's see, I'm just gonna comment this out because we're now doing it inside the loop and let's see what happens, what happens now and if it's working, what it's doing and what the errors might be. Okay, Shh. let's compile it. Something's not working nicely, let's see what it is. Oh yes, of course, because I'm also doing some checking here. I'm just gonna comment this out because it's not relevant for us right now um, because we're actually just reworking this piece of code and let's compile it again, and let's run it. Okay, let's do three, four. Okay, uh, well, I mean, that was unfortunate that I did seven straight away, but guess the number. Uh, maybe we'll want to do like, I want to break out of the loop if I've done the right numbers. 
But let's do, if I do 6 and 4, and it lets me put in again 3 and 2, it lets me put in again. Now if I press Control D, what it will do is it will just exit out of it, right? It will stop. And the reason it just stops in this case, because actually I have nothing after my while loop. There's nothing to say do anything else. So it breaks out of the while loop, it goes to this return zero, and then it finishes, which is why it kind of didn't do anything else in there, right? It's doing exactly what I tell it to do. Um, okay, fantastic. Okay, how is everyone feeling? How's everyone feeling? Gab, did you do that? Did I not see it? I must have missed it. I think you did it. Can you do it again, please? I missed that actual, the whole. How's everyone feeling? Feeling good? Thumbs up? Two thumbs up, yes, yes. Okay, good, all right. So um, I think maybe if you feel the scanf will trip you up a little bit, don't worry about it. There is a lab exercise that gets you to practice to keep scanning in on a loop. Um, and in your assignment, you will also keep scanning in on a loop. So you will get a lot of practice um, to keep scanning in on a loop. OK, let me just check how this is going, 75 votes. I sure can. Should I do it bit by bit, line by line? <clears throat> okay. All right, let me run through it line by line so you can see what's happening and what the functions are doing. Because I think um, it's really important that you understand that when the function takes in some inputs, copies of them are made when you go to the function. It's not the same variables. You're not, you're not kind of playing with the same things. And in, in week five, you'll be able to pass it something that you'll be able to play with directly. It's still making a copy of it, but you'll be using um, memory, which means you can do a lot more um, awful things, really. Um, and that's the fun of C. That's really why we do C as the first course here, so that you can play with memory. Okay, so let's do it line by line. I actually did, I downloaded this pen. Let me just, um, I definitely don't want an arrow. Okay, so let's have a look um, what happens. Okay, so we've defined our target as seven. We've done some um, dice, we've done, a, comparison so we've defined that there's two functions that are going to happen and then we go into this main function here okay so I'm going to say that oh god this is awful this is what happens when you forget your iPad at home and the graphic tablets is not working okay so this is my main function because now I have many functions so I'm gonna hold that as a main Okay, I'll go inside my main because that's where I start executing my code. And on line 25, I'm declaring, uh, God, six letter variable, which I have to write now with a mouse and a trackpad. Okay, um, okay, so I've got a variable die one. Then on line 26, I've got die two. This is fun watching me do this. It's like watching a kindy kid starting school again. Um, Okay, die two, then, and there's nothing, they're not initialized with anything, so they're just um, living life wild because I'm going to initialize them by scanning something in. Then I declare sum, and this sum I actually not just declare it, but I initialize it to zero, so I'm going to give it the value zero. Okay, then I go to line 30 and I'm going to print out enter the two dice rolls. Okay, and let's say I'm going to put in, I don't know, three and four just for fun. Um, so when I go to line 31, what I'm doing in here is I'm going to do this scan F in here. And I've entered 3 and 4, which means die 1 is now got the value of 3. Die 2 now has a value of 4. This scan F, because it's just scanned in two numbers, is going to return 2. Okay? So that the output of this scan F function, the return, is going to be 2. So my loop condition is while 2 is equal to 2, which is clearly true. So I'm going to go into this while loop, okay? Um, 
that's okay so I've gone into that too excellent um, into the loop sorry and when I go into the loop what happens is I now have this function here which is saying okay add dice die one die two so what happens is I'm calling the function and I'm sending the values 3 and 4 to it. Die 1 is 3, die 2 is 4. So once the call has been made to a function, what happens is I go down to my add dice function over here. And what I do then is I, I've sent it with this is 3 and this is 4. Okay, But What's happened is I've called this function called add dice. So let's say this is my add dice function here. Okay, I'm now going to be calling everything A, B, C, D. Okay, so this is my add dice function. And these variables, even though they're called the same thing, they are not the same thing. They are created inside this function, okay? And die 1, I copied the value 3 into it. And die 2, I copied the value 4 into it. So I copied the value 4 into it. Then what happens here is I go to this return and I add them together. So I add them together, 3 plus 4 is 7, which means I'm going to return 7. When I reach this curly bracket, um, all of these just go and they disappear. Okay, they no longer exist. And I go back to my function, so where the call was made from, with the number 7, I go back to where the call was made from. The call was made from over here, and this part over here, this whole thing, has returned 7 to me. So this function here, 7. So on this side is now 7, and 7 now gets assigned into the sum. So my sum is no longer 0, it's now going to be, so it was 0 to start with, it's no longer 0, it's now 7, which is what this function returned. Great. So now I go to line 35 and I call the function comparison and I give it the number 7. Okay, so I'll move down into comparison function over here. Um, probably I'll make some room for it so that it's not... doesn't want to clean up for me there you go okay so the new function is called comparison so that means I've now got a function that's called comparison and that's a new function This is not what it looks like in memory. I will do like a stack diagram, I think, one week so you can see what it actually looks like in memory. Okay, so now I've got this function comparison and I've called it. And inside comparison, I now have another variable that's sum and I copied the value 7 into it. This sum and this sum, not the same sum, okay? Two different variables. Okay, so now my comparison has inside it 7 and now I go through this function. So if 7 and my target is 7 it's defined globally as a hash define so is 7 greater than 7 no it's not which means i don't run this chunk of code i go to else if is 7 less than 7 no it's not so i skip this block of code as well and i move into this third else because it's my only other option to print out you've guessed the number i get down to this bracket down to this bracket when I get down to this bracket, it means that all of this is now gone. Um, so I, don't, I only have this sum. I don't have the other sum with me anymore. Uh, that's not what I meant to do at all. Okay. And I'll return back to this comparison. Um, I've come back here. I had nothing to return, so I don't need to give it anything. And I'll go to line 36 where I'll go enter the two dice rolls again. Fantastic. And I'll go back to my scanf, so I'll try to scanf again, and this is where I might put in two different numbers and check that it's equal to two. Okay, how does that feel? Oh, microphone, I didn't expect to do that. Gab, sorry, can you pull how that was with my terrible writing? Okay. 
Okay, and let me see how that felt. If you're hearing about this for the first time, it's not going to be like, oh, this is amazing, this makes perfect sense. Um, it's really not. So just give yourself a chance to hear it two, three, four times and it will start to make sense and it will start to feel more natural what's going on. All right. Gab, beautiful, I feel unstoppable. 40%, oh, that's dropping very fast, 34%. 31% now feel unstoppable. It's not bad, 30% of this course feels unstoppable, apparently. Don't worry, we'll stop you in your tracks next week with the assignment. All right, so um, that's good. I think, um, don't worry, each week as well, we're going to keep kind of doing things, right? And we're going to keep, um, you know, we're going to keep rehashing all of this. So don't worry. And then on Wednesday, we're actually going to start arrays and we're going to still talk a little bit about functions, but we're going to, you know, focus on arrays. And arrays is going to be really the big thing for your assignment. It's also one of the hurdles in your exam. So we've kind of brought ourselves to the final, um, not the first hurdle, not the final hurdle, the next hurdle. I don't know. It's meant to be harder, but people seem to do better in the exam for the second hurdle. Anyway, if you study, you'll do well, I promise. We do provide a lot of help. Okay. Good. So functions is good. This is amazing. Okay, if you want to rehash, there you go. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly talk about style because there's been a lot of questions. Someone even did a review of our style on the forum. Um, I can't decide if I appreciated that or not. Um, I would have given them a review of their review. Um, what I want you to understand is 1511 is an introduction to programming, right? You're not, we don't expect you to know anything. We don't expect you to have ever programmed before which means that sometimes our style will not make much sense to someone that has programmed before and it will not make much sense in terms of efficiency. But that's okay because um, you're not the target audience. And when you're first starting out programming, it's really important sometimes to kind of develop a consistent style. I've seen a lot of um, bad code, um, even when people kind of graduate and move on with their life um, and bad habits are very hard to kill. Um, if you've ever seen my desktop, that is a prime example of that. Um, okay, so style is important. In your assignment one and assignment two, we will mark you for style. That marking is done manually by a tutor. So a tutor will look at your code and will kind of make sure that you're meeting the style guidelines and that things make sense and that you are coding nicely, right? That is the easiest 20% you can ever get in an assignment. Honestly, just follow the style guide. It's, that's, you know, that's, you don't even have to think about that. Maybe, a little bit afterwards. Um, try to write nicely to start with as opposed to writing kind of like everything all in one page and then making changes afterwards because it's really hard to look through code. I think I did do shh. I think I did a, um, a file just for fun um, and I kind of like imagine seeing something like this um, and it's hard to read, right? It's not, it's, it's awful. There is no white space at all. Um, things are just all over the place. Um, look at these if statements. They're just kind of if and then the statement's made straight after it, which will, it all compiles. It all works, it all does what it's meant to do, but it's very difficult to read and understand a piece of code that looks like this. And that's kind of why we talk uh, um, about style. So when you're styling your code, you're not styling it for the computer. The computer, the compiler doesn't care, right? If you have a space or if you have an enter. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't. I really wanted to say something more rude, but I'm not 
that I am in the lecture. Um, so the code that you write is for humans. It's for other humans to read your code. Often when you go out to industry, you're not working on your own. There's other people that work together on projects. It means that you have to be able to look at each other's code. You have to be able to read each other's code. You have to be able to review each other's code. Sometimes you need to maintain other people's code. And if you've ever tried to maintain other people's code and the code is um, you know, awfully written, hard to understand, it takes a lot longer than what it should take. So neat code kind of makes sure that we don't make as many mistakes um, and it, it helps with development and maintenance as well. Okay, indentation and bracketing. Oh my God, I don't even know. This show doesn't, it's not, it, it's an, I don't know. Has anyone seen Silicon Valley? It was the best show ever. Oh, um, I was superbly, I feel like I've worked with every single person that appeared on that show. Uh, probably I am one of those people as well. But in it, they have like this big discussion over like a person doing um, indentation. And it was like someone uses spaces and someone uses tabs. And it's a bit of a thing. So who uses spaces when they indent? Who spacebar, spacebar, spacebar? Well, some people do. Maybe not. No, who uses tabs? Yes, tabs are so much easier. Just tab. But some people will swear to you that spaces are the way to go. Often when you program, consistency is the key. You've got to keep your code consistently written. But tabs, I mean, why would you space? I don't know, but people do. Um, comments, where comments need to be, okay? You've got to be, um, please um, don't comment as much as I do in the lecture code. That's not good commenting. Um, and consistency is key. So when I read your code, and I often do look at your code, and by the way, when you do your exam, whilst we don't mark you for style in the exam, uh, I manually mark your hurdles, and I manually mark um, some of those last questions um, that are quite hard to do. And if I can't read your code, it's exactly the same thing probably that you were told at school. Um, you know, if I can't read your essay, I'm not going to read it. Well, if I can't read your code, I can't give you marks, right? Um, and if it takes longer than 10 minutes to understand what on earth is happening, I'm not going to keep going. Um, so please, nice, neat code. Please, please, please. Um, okay, so keep it clean as you go. Um, name your variables, nice things. Um, do as I say, not as I do, because um, this is something that I have always struggled with because I always just want to go faster. So everything is called A, B, C, D, E. Awful idea, don't ever do that. Please call your variables whatever they actually are performing or whatever they're doing. Um, if you line up your braces as well, it will help you to see what each statement is doing, what's inside each statement, what belongs outside of the statement. So it makes it a lot easier to actually um, go back to your own code and find mistakes in your own code as well. And often you'll have one erroneous bracket, your code won't compile, a lot easier to find that erroneous bracket if you have styled your code nicely. Okay, so someone I think last week was like, okay, there's a lot of if statements, there's a lot of ifs nesting inside ifs, nesting inside ifs, nesting inside ifs. We actually check for these nested ifs because it's not a good coding practice. You know, once you've gone four, I think, I can't remember what the style guide says, is it four levels? Five, oof. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't go up to five. That's awful. So if you're nest inside a nest, so if you're checking an if statement and then you've gone into it and you're checking another if statement and you've gone into it and you're checking another if statement, it starts to become very difficult to understand what on earth is going on. And that's where functions will come in very useful because you'll be able to move code out into functions. Okay. We've got our style guide. Okay, some quick things, you know, a bit of shorthand as well, which we haven't done yet, but we've been doing a little bit off. We've been doing, we've been writing every line a lot, the long way. Um, so if you want to increment count by one, shh, please, please. Um, I haven't had anything to drink. I can't keep talking for much. Anyway. Um, Okay, increment count by one. If you want to do count is equal to count plus one, you just have to write count plus plus. Um, you might have seen on the forum someone talks about posts and pre-increments. Don't worry about that for now. 
just um, where at one stage I will talk about the difference between them and what they do, but don't worry about it yet. Okay, if you want to decrement by one, same thing, count minus minus does the same thing. And because you're going to be looping so much, and inside those loops you're going to have to update those variables often by one, you're going to be using that plus plus a lot or minus minus. Um, if you want to increment by five, by six, by seven, I don't know, some non-standard, not one number, um, if you do this plus equal, what that means is count is equal to count plus five. So it just means um, add another five to the variable count. You can do it with decrement as well and with multiply, just use the multiply symbol. So that shorthand, all it means is just um, apply that to that variable. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, our scanf. So just remember um, that scanf returns to us how many things it scanned in successfully and you can use that return. So instead of doing um, like we did today, instead of doing the actual variable and storing what it returns in the variable and then checking against that variable, you can just check for it straight away in the statement. Okay, so you can check um, in the if statement or in the while loop where you keep checking for it, so you can just keep going in the statement. Okay. Um, okay, a few people have also said, okay, we've done while loops, what about for loops? Joy of joys. Um, so you can use for loops. Why not? Who knows what for loops are? Few people, few people. I would expect it to be more people. Um, for loops are quite common and you are welcome to use them. Um, so for loops are excellent for iterating over arrays. So on Wednesday, um, which is in two days, we will, instead of a while loop, we're going to use a for loop a few times just so that you can see what's going on. Um, so a for loop is really useful when you know um, the loop should execute a certain number of times. Some people just have a preference for for loops. Um, when I first started teaching 1511, it was a really hard, and when I first started teaching it, this course did not allow for loops. And I had to bring that back because I, my head does not think in while loops, it thinks in for loops. I find while loops to be quite hard to, um, I find for loops to be the way that I code. So sometimes, um, I don't know, you know, you can go between, you know, one or the other. Don't get stressed about which one is right, which one is wrong. In arrays, much easier to use for loops. In linked lists, probably while loops are much easier to use. So you'll get used to kind of doing it. So I'll just quickly go over the structure of a for loop, and we're going to use it next week. Okay, so while or for, doesn't matter, you know, treat yourself, whatever's easier for you, um, either one is fine. So for a for loop, the key word is for, and you're for something, 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 you're going to do something, something, something. So similar structure to a while. So in brackets, what you're doing is you're basically doing the three things. You're initializing your kind of control variable, you're checking whether or not that control variable is doing something or meeting some target, and then you're going to update that control variable. So what you do in a while loop when you, you know, you declare your control loop variable before the while loop, then you check for it in the condition and then you update. You're doing it basically all in one line in a for loop. So here I'm initializing, declaring and initializing a control variable. It's an int count, it's equal to zero. So I've declared it int count, I've initialized it by making it equal to zero. Um, then semicolon and I'm going to check that that count is less than 10, which means that I'm going to execute this loop um, 10 times because I've started from zero um, and then another semicolon and what I do after I execute at the end is I update it so I increment at the end of each iteration I'm going to um, increment by one which is what that count plus plus is doing and we will use a for loop um, on Wednesday so I've given an example for a for loop you know int i is equal to zero and then for some reason that's not going to work because now I've used a different variable. I don't know, that should say count um, so that it's equivalent. So this I should be count. It's exactly the same as kind of doing it in a while loop. 
count is equal to zero, you're checking for count is less than 10 and then you're updating it um, and then you're updating it at the end, okay? So similar things. Okay, so, oh my God, we're so, I did so quick today. Um, I could do another piece of code. Never been this quick. Should we do another piece of code or is everyone kind of like exhausted by life at this point in time? It's only really one answer. It should be like, yes, let's do more coding. No, no more coding? Wrap it up. Oh, you want to do another piece of code? Oh, one person wants to do another piece of code. Um, what should I do? You've never done a lecture with me. You don't know what this is like. This is severe. This is like, I always do this, and then you give me a context and I'll code it. Recursion? No, absolutely not. Week three, enjoy. Early bra. Oh. Okay, fine. Let's, I'll let it see. Oh, more, lots of people are saying more code. On the chat. All right. Some people are packing up. Some people are like, I'm ready to go. Um, it's all wild here. More code, more code Valorant. My God, I'm not going to be here for quite a few weeks, years. Um, all right, I'm going to do one more piece of code. What should I do? Except that everyone's leaving. <laughs> Almost everyone. Okay. What should I do? What should I do? Someone give me a context. Give me something fun. Oh. Do a while loop. Okay, I'll do a while loop. For some of you, that might not be that pleasant, but um, okay. What should we do? Now people are just naming games and code Roblox, code Last of Us. Thank you. Hey. The what? Oh, the break time. Oh, I'm not going to do that, the one today. The one today is an unsolvable maths problem. Okay, I'm like, I'm definitely not doing the one today. That's We're going to be here forever. I can't remember that one. It was like 500 motorcycles. How many? I'm going to give an answer in the forum to that one. They are fun. Okay. Okay, literally the whole chat is just games. Okay, I'm gonna do a while loop. I think everyone is done as well, all at the same time. I shouldn't have mentioned that it's almost time to finish. Um, shift inversion, oh. Pff. If you don't know how to do the shift inversion, go to a help session today. Hey? Okay. All right. I, I think I'm not going to be able to talk over the over the hum. So I think we're going to have to finish. I'll have to do an extra um, an extra question next time. It's too loud. If you want something, um, or if you have any fun things that you would like coded, just give it in the feedback form. Okay. Thank you all for today. I'll see you all on Wednesday for a raise and we're going to do lots of wild loops for a raise. Thanks. Thank you. So, if you want to print um, line separate